Good morning, folks. We're going right to spaceweathernews.com to check in on our star and on the southern hemisphere. We did get a little pop center disk as a tiny filament destabilized. It's so small, however, that it shouldn't be too influential over the solar wind parameters. We can also peek in on the northern hemisphere of the sun and find more surface features, but less eruptive activity except for catching the edge of that southern eruption at the bottom of the frame. You'll remember those bright umbral magnetic field loops on the left mean more sunspots are incoming, but thus far, the Earth-facing quiet effect is making it look like sunspot minimum. Really not even worth magnetic analysis of these areas as they're not going to fire big, but that doesn't mean they aren't an eruption threat. Any flaring whatsoever down south will destabilize that thick, dark filament of plasma apparently running right through the sunspot. This is something we don't see very often a plasma filament finding a home in the middle of the umbral region. Now this won't be like most filaments we see, where they are arching up into the corona, and when they release they require no flaring beforehand and you can see them slowly lift up and away. But compare that to this sunspot with a thick dark filament cutting right through it. These ones offer no slow release and simply blast away. Eyes open on the southern hemisphere of the sun. Let's come to 211 angstroms and see the corona hole down south, which may not be geo-effective, but also top left you see that huge corona hole from the backside that we analyzed yesterday. We've expected a stream impact in the solar wind, but perhaps it was weak because we're dropping into the 200s range on speed, and that is downright anemic. We did finally get 2016 on the board in gamma ray bursts, one from Cetus and one from Hydra in the last day. Two top stories today. First, SpaceX tried to one-up their previous touchdown landing by doing it on a barge in the water. Everything was fine until one of the legs failed to lock, it fell over, and exploded. It's a shame because otherwise it appeared to be one heck of a show with a successful touchdown. Just that pesky leg on the right side there. Website members, you'll recall the episode of Deeper Look from 2015, episode 98 on December 21st. We took some hard shots at the mainstream for jumping on board the virtually debunked oxygen loss disaster due to phytoplankton loss hypothesis. Well, let's put it to bed. Add to the multiple studies we shared in that episode a more recent one completely debunking that warm water equals death from lack of oxygen idea. The smallest elements of life are adapting like crazy. High pressure clearing most of the central U.S. and keeping precipitation to the coastlines. Unfortunately, that's also what dropped the Arctic blast down in here as well. Across the pond, we have no dominant Earth spots, but array of convergence lines should be noted. And down under, we see a cyclone and cyclone candidate east and west, but New Zealand and southwest Australia aren't going to have to wait for the weather tonight. January 30th and 31st, observing the frontier. Phoenix, Arizona. Our conference finale is just a few days away, and I know some of you want to play Snowbird for a weekend and come hang out with us. Don't lie. Website members, go back and watch episode 98 from last year, and then come back and read the link to today's top story on the phytoplankton. Also, don't miss the Fly on the Wall podcast from this weekend. Apparently, most of you love that episode more than most. Anyway, we're going to run down the Earth spot lows in the Southern Pacific and follow with shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.